Hey guys, it's Landon with Redefined Horizons, and this is the second video I'm doing in this set of videos that show you how to use some of the basic tools in Inkscape. A lot of my uh, other Inkscape videos are older, um, so they're, they're showing their age. So I'm using Inkscape 1.3 in this set of videos, and a lot of my other videos I, I would kind of show you how to use Inkscape while I was working on other work products. And in this set of videos, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna focus on the, the tools. Um, so I wanna, in this video, show you how to use uh, a couple of tools to draw shapes. Uh, we look at two or three of those different tools. Um, that's all we're gonna cover in this video. So the first uh, shape we're gonna use, so we'll, we're just gonna be kind of working our way down this toolbar here. So the first uh, sh shape I'm gonna show you is how to draw rectangles. So you click on the tool. I've got a, a document set up here with a with the snapping grid, and my snaps are turned on. <clears throat> and then um, you left click and hold down to start your rectangle, and you just drag with the left key down. And then when you let go, it draws your shape. Let's give that a fill just so we can see. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, this is the select tool. So if you have this active and you click once, you get these arrows. If you hover over the middle of the shape, anywhere over the, the inside of the shape, you can hold down your left click and drag the shape. If you click again, you get these little curved arrows you can use to rotate. Okay. And you can actually, this is your rotation center, you can change that. And then it will rotate around that new rotation center. If you want to reset that, you just, I think you double, is it double click? There's a way to reset this. Uh, I'll, I'll have to figure out how to do that. All right, I had to Google that. So to reset your rotation center, you hold down the shift key and left click. Okay, and then it'll, it'll remove. Now when you first select an object, um, <clears throat> You can use uh, these arrows to resize, so it's not just a move. You can use these arrows to resize your shape. Okay, now just be careful when you're doing that. It's it's scaling the stroke, so it does change the width of your stroke. Okay, and you can fix that in the fill and stroke dialog, but I just want you to be aware of that. So that's pretty simple. That's how you draw squares, uh, circles. Almost as simple. By the way, you can see as we're activating these tools. Um, it's changing things up in this toolbar right here. This is kind of like a context context sensitive ribbon in Microsoft Office. Inkscape calls it the uh, the tools control bar. So you can see when I click the circle here, we get some different options. So I'm gonna um, click on this. This lets you uh, create a slice. This is uh, a whole ellipse. This is just the arc no fill um, and this is a uh, uh, sh a closed shape with the with the cord that's cut with a cord I actually I, I like to leave it on this so this will let, let us draw ellipses and circles okay so if you want to draw a, a perfect circle you just hold down the control key when you draw that'll give you perfect circles and then if you want to draw your a perfect circle or a, an ellipse around a particular point you have to show, hold down the shift key. Okay. So that'll draw it around a, a specific point. Um, so uh, if you want to draw an arc, arcs are a little bit tricky in Inkscape. I don't know why it's not letting me switch here. Alright, so you can't have zero, 0 in this box. So once it lets you switch, uh, you can actually draw an arc. Okay, so ow, that looks really funky. It looks funky because it has a fill, so I'm going to turn the fill off. And then, uh, to, to me, the, <laughs> the easiest thing to do to edit an arc is to go ahead and open the XML editor. And if you, if you look down here, it has these... Um, 
let's see, that's the radius of your arc, so we can change that. Let's say uh, I want a one inch arc, an arch, an arc on a circle that is one inch in diameter. So in my unit system, that's 25.4. So there's there's a one inch diameter circle, a radius circle. I'm sorry. Okay, and then it's got these um, end start and end values. I believe those are in radians. So <clears throat> if we if we want a half uh, a circle, it's two radians, right? So it's about 3.14. That gives you a half circle. Okay, so if you want, if you want to do that exact, if you open up your calculator, let's say we want a 90 degree arc. Okay, so we'll go uh, pi divided by two. Okay, so that that should give us a 90 degree arc. Okay, and then the start zero controls where the arc starts. So if I make that 90. Okay, that's in radians, sorry. So if we make it uh, one radian, now it's starting down here. Okay, so you can change this. You can uh, you can change this, but it's in radians, right? Which is a little bit uh, which is a little bit weird. So just be aware of that. But that that's how you can control where your arcs go. Okay. Now you can also double click on your arcs. Whoop. Use the note or use the node editing tool and if you click on one of these nodes, let's try this one. Nope. You can um, you can actually manipulate this shape. Okay, but arcs are a little bit tricky, but you can draw them with the circle tool. Uh, these are regular polygon shapes. You can you can pick a re regular polygon or a star and set the number of corners. So this is a pentagon. Again, if you hold down the control key, it'll give you a regular polygon. If you hold down the shift key, it'll draw from the center of your selection point. And again, those are you can edit those. Now I think if we go object, no sorry, path, object to path, then it'll give us these other nodes that we can manipulate. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you guys on the shape tools, uh, but I did want to take a few more minutes and show you uh, this other tool. So there's three tools to draw lines. There's the pen tool, the pencil tool, and the calligraphy tool. The pencil tool lets you do freehand um, freehand drawing and it and it and it smooths your stuff out and gives you uh, paths that are that are actually can be manipulated. Um, I don't know that I've used that a whole lot, but if you if you're just doing something um, artistic, for example, um, so like I've got a an exhibit I need to draw in the future that has a river that's just kind of a graphical element, so I might use this tool to draw in the river. Okay, and you can see it's not perfect. It does some weird stuff like that on the end, but it'll it'll get you close. Um, and I, in my experience, you know, higher values of smoothing uh, tend to give me what I want. That's a, it's a little better than lower values of smoothing. So you can see that looks pretty smooth there, right? Okay, but the main so I don't use the calligraphy tool at all. It's got all kinds of options you could mess around with. I don't do any calligraphy, so I, I don't use that. Um, the freehand tool is good if you just need approximate, natural, kind of smooth-looking shapes. But most of what I draw, most of, the, most of the paths I draw are with what they call the pen tool. And so you've got some options up here. Uh, you can draw regular Bezier paths, what they call spiral paths, B-spine paths. Those are just uh, different mathematical functions used to draw curves straight line segments and uh, what they call paraxical line segments so most of the time I'm using I'm just drawing straight lines so if you left click once and then left click again and right click you get a straight path if you um, click multiple times you get what us AutoCAD users would call a, a polyline okay in Inkscape these are both paths 
that the uh, paraxial is um, will always draw your line segments 90 degrees to each other so it's cool for things like uh, uh, building footprints for example so that's a pretty cool cool little tool so it's kind of like having your ortho turned on in AutoCAD um, and then you can draw these different kinds of, of spirals um, now to do that if you have your tool activated you can draw a straight line segment but when you click here instead of just doing a single left click you click and hold and you'll get these curve handles your next click ends the curve then you can do a straight line again straight line you want another curve left click and hold drag last point ends the curve okay right click to enter now once you've done that you can you can click on here with your node tools and you get these little grips here that allow you to edit that curve okay the regular nodes just get dragged but the curve nodes will give you those handles okay and I'll be honest with you I don't do a whole bunch with this but you can do very cool stuff so that's with uh, the Bezier curve option checked so we can we can check one of these other options and works the same way in principle okay so after I click my first one it's just creating curves and the more points I click it's just changing those curves I'm not going to pretend I understand a ton about how this tool works because I don't uh, but it gives you some very very smooth curves again if you click on that with the node editor you'll get handles you can manipulate okay. So probably some very cool stuff you can do with this. I'll be honest with you, I like the spiral. I, I like the result I get with the spiral the splines better than I do the Bezier splines. But So you got some different options there. Um, that's how you draw straight lines. All right, so I think that is most of the shape tools. Um, you can tell I'm excited because I'm clapping my hands. I think that's most of the shape tools that I wanted to show you guys, basic shape tools. What I'm going to show you in the next video is how to do some um, editing in the XML editor and explain a little bit about how the SVG coordinate uh, coordinate system works because it's very different than what you would be um, used to if you were using a, a CAD product like AutoCAD or BricsCAD. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.